there were a few other combinations we talked about you working on and practicing that you don't have in your solar routine, but that you can practice because you asked about the open telemark and Walt's how you might practice that. So you can do the open telemark followed by the wing. Right now you're doing your wing after the weave and the promenade. Then you can do the open telemark also into the cross hesitation. So we'll be looking at those in more detail later, but if you dance your open telemark and then you dance your cross hesitation, let's practice that into the back whisk. You could also dance an outside spin, but we're currently doing the outside spin after the cross hesitation in your routine. So once again, if I would dance the telemark, and then I would dance the cross hesitation. Now, I will not wind up, wind up as much as I will for outside spin, but enough to send my lady outside partner. And then a note on this step being taken diagonally back. We always dance the back whisk from the reverse corte. If you remember in bronze, we danced a reverse corte into a back whisk. Once again, taking that diagonal. So it's a very common fault for the man to move sideways. This also will cause a loss of direction and balance. My lady's natural direction is to come forward and fill this space. So she's going outside partner and she's turning into the whisk. So if I start in this direction, then I suddenly change my direction. This is always a recipe for disaster. So I've talked about that in some of my other videos, that whatever direction you commence a swing, which is the same as commencing any action, follow in that direction. So moving my foot to the side cuts the direction, causes a wobble. Then if we wanted to dance a wing from the open telemark, now I will have a change in alignment. I don't think I mentioned this on your lesson the other day, but I will now take my foot pointing down the line of dance. So if my foot is pointing there, what does that tell you? That my hips have turned to commence the wing. And I'll reiterate what I talked about last week. That doesn't mean that your body should go square. And that is a bit difficult to do. When we turn our foot, we want to turn everything. Now we've got a bad shape. So I'm going to turn my leg and foot down the line of dance. Then I'm going to unwind my top. And that, of course, is again how the gentleman who's leading will be responsible to a great degree for how that shape looks. If I'm dancing the lady's part, and she comes out of her telemark there, she also, hopefully, will keep her body wound up to you and not come out flat. Once again, we get that bad shoulder line. So she is wound up and she brings her body around and ends up outside partner. Also in this rotated position. This is a common fault for the lady to end up flat. So she needs to be wrapped up. So my ending position on the wing is well to my left with my lady in my pocket. And she has her body wrapped well to the left with her foot outside, right? Her thigh is outside of my thigh. One of the things we talked about on the outside spin was how the right thigh clears the space for the lady to step outside. In this case, my left thigh clears the space for her to step outside. So of course if there's rotation, but it's very important we understand that little bit of a backward hinge underneath the, coat, the top of the thigh, this little space must not be pushed forward. This is inviting her for the wing, end of the wing. This is inviting her for the outside spin. Now, when we're coming out of that, we hope that the lady will move the top of her left thigh back so that you can get out easily. And of course, you're dancing with me, so I'm going to move my hip out of your way. But that's how we each do our job to help our partner. 